Happy Saturday, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Zillow is predicting a new listing explosion next year. They didn't call it explosion. I'm being dramatic, but I've been digging into new listings. You know, active listings are extremely important, extremely important. They're what's going to decide whether or not we get a price drop. There's some interesting charts. In fact, I've got one. I took the closed volume compared to the new listings and the ratio I got there blew my mind. I've never seen anybody do this, but when I plotted it over time, I thought, what in the world am I looking at? I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to tell you what I think, but honestly, I would love to hear what you have to say because it called the peak of the market almost perfect, believe it or not. So what does it mean going into 2024? We're going to take a look at it. Now, that being said, I'm not trying to get anybody to buy. I think this market is insane about 95% of the time, though I have really helped some people this year. I've got an FHA closing. It's an assumption. Someone's picking up a 2.7% mortgage here in just a week. Um, it got delayed. I got pretty nasty on Twitter. I had to, but we 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 got a fast track, and um, I'm very proud of how it's turning out. So without further ado, let's take a look at some things that I've been looking at for Nashville. First things first, housing inventory, total housing units in the United States over the population. Believe it or not, we have more housing units per person in the United States than we have had this century. Yes, even more than in 2008. So all the people saying there's a housing shortage, I'm not going to dispute that. Maybe there's what more wealth here. Maybe people want more second homes. Maybe they want more Airbnbs. But one thing we do know is that there are more housing units per person today than there have been this century. That is a shocking statistic and certainly one that makes me think, could we be in for a crash, correction, whatever you want to say? I, this is clearly a bubble, but you know, everything, it's an everything bubble. What's not a bubble? And what bursts? Like what, what happens if the dollar crashes? Housing goes up, my friends. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna guarantee you there's a crash. I, I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna crash. I don't, I don't even know anymore. Who knows? This is Zillow's prediction, by the way. More homes will hit the market as homeowners accept that mortgage rates aren't falling anytime soon. Guys, if we get the new listing explosion that I predicted in 23, that did not happen, okay? I was wrong. I was wrong. But if we get a new listing explosion, you better believe that houses prices will come down, okay? It's it's just, it will happen. We are already going into 2024 in a much more stable, more balanced market than we had coming into 2023. Things are tighter than they were coming into 2023. So are we gonna get this new listing explosion? I went into a deep rabbit hole of data trying to figure this out this weekend. I'm gonna show you some of the charts that I found, uh, some of the things I came up with. Okay, let's keep going. So Lance Lambert, said that uh, the U.S. housing market witnessed a sharp decrease in new listings compared to 2019 and 2023. And it's true. I was shocked. I was shocked by how few listings came on the market. And it certainly put a damper on the, ab on the ability for price drops to happen, especially, guys, especially when you pair out the million-dollar listings. Um, and so I went into a deep, deep data dive on this. And here's what I found. We're going to come back to that. But here's what I found. Annualized new listings. You can see pre-pandemic in Nashville, we had 56,800 listings annually, okay? Now, it tanked after the pandemic to 44,767. So people were refining their house. They were loving their 3% mortgage. They were like, mm, not going anywhere. I love this. Nothing wrong with that. In 22, it skyrocketed, okay? I thought we would continue to get the same or more listings. I thought if we just get the same, we were going to accumulate so many more listings. Just to give you an idea, guys, if we had 3,000 more listings today, our inventory would be 10, 20, 30% higher than it is now. It would be, we're, we're roughly 6,000 active listings. We would be much closer to like 7,500 or 8,000. Uh, our active listings would be much higher than they are now. And we would be seeing many more price drops. So it's stable, it's tightened, but look at this guys. Look at this chart that absolutely called the peak of the market. Okay, so what I did was I took annualized closed volume for Nashville. And I compared it to annualized new listing volume. And believe it or not, think about this for a second. Okay, every new listing doesn't sell. Okay, there's a few reasons why, for that. Okay, for one, um, there's a certain period of time before the listing expires. If it expires, let's say in 60 or 90 days, then they relist it. Okay, that counts as two listings. So then when it sells, it would be like, if that was the only one, it would be like 50% closed volume to new listings. Okay, so there are plenty of reasons this number is never gonna be 100%. But look at this. It peaked at 87% prior to 
closed volume, annualized closed volume relative to new listings, it peaked at 87% in February of 22. And guys, the peak of the market in Nashville was May of 22. And then it dramatically dropped back to pre-pandemic levels. The seller's market was over and it is over. The fact that closed volume to new listings is back to where it was. It's actually lower than it was pre-pandemic. It tells me, you know, people say it's a seller's market. It's not nearly like it was. And I would say this is not a seller's market in most places, even as inventory is very, very tight. Even when you pair out those million dollar listings, it's very tight. We are back to 59%. That's interesting. So here's my question to you guys. Okay, what this means to me is that people don't have to sell their house. If they had to sell their house, I think this ratio, so this ratio goes up for, for one of two reasons. One, we're in extreme shortage, 87% close. It doesn't matter what you put out there, people, someone's gonna buy it, okay? The other reason it might go up is if you have to sell, and so you are more accommodating on your price and you're more accommodating on the offers you get. So the fact that we're getting 59% tells me that we're in a much more stable environment. And if there's a trigger event, right, a recession, maybe this number changes in a positive way because price drops are happening. Or maybe this number, maybe it goes down if people don't want to sell their house, they can't sell it. This number going down, to me, it, it, it indicates that people don't have to sell. But I, I don't know. I mean, like, I just discovered this today and I thought, what an interesting number. What does this mean? So annualized closed volume, annualized new listings, peaked at the peak of the market. Now it's back to 59%. I would love for you guys to tell me, what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything. Okay, so this is my tool that I told you I was building. I'm super happy. I did uh, streamline it a little bit. I clumped some neighborhoods together to get enough data to actually make it meaningful. So some of these neighborhoods, but think about it like this. Like everybody reports on zip codes and I'm building out basically neighborhood maps. So I'm reporting at a much more granular level that tells you, you know, because you can go across the street, it's a completely different environment a lot of times. Granular, making it much more granular helps you realize what actually is happening. So like here's West Haven. You can see, I put gross yield on here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but 5.6%. You click on it, it's gonna show you West Haven. But look at this. There were three over 600 per foot last year. There's only one this year. Let me cover one other one. Let's go into Brent Haven area here. This, this is right next to 65 just south. It's kind of Brentwood area. And you can see we had one peak at $724 a foot in 2022. The highest we had was May of this year at 556. And you can see in the past quarter, we haven't had anything over 500. Pretty soft, but look at all the active listings. Look at all these active listings. They're all higher price per square foot than what the trend is. That's probably why they're sitting. We've got one under contract here, uh, 1612 Crockett Hills, but look at where it's priced. It's priced under 300 foot and they're actually going to sell that one. It looks to me like, take out that outlier, it looks to me like they peaked in May of 23. Crazy. Now this also has the closing terms of each one. So you can see if you wanna see which ones were cash sales, you can see those. You go over it, you can see actually what the address sales price and the MLS number if you wanna look it up on Realtrax or um, you can use the address. We can look it up on Redfin. Let's go to another neighborhood. There's one that I was like looking at earlier today. It was really interesting. There is Witherspoon. Check out Witherspoon. So just so you know, Witherspoon is like a, a three to $5 million neighborhood. Okay. It's a pricey neighborhood. Okay. Check this out. Look at Witherspoon here. Okay. It peaked in 22. One went $818 a foot. Another one, 738. By the way, I use price per square foot to normalize for different size houses. Okay, when you pick a neighborhood, typically the lots are similar sized. A lot of the things are very similar. Even builders a lot of times are very similar. But the one thing that changes is the size of the house. And so the best way to normalize for that is use price per square foot. So that's why I use price per square foot. But look at this, 738, 818, 691. Okay, come to this year, nothing over 600 has sold this year. Now we do have one under contract, 892. It's under contract, we'll see if it sells. But mostly the 600 and above price point, it's starting to soften up here. It's starting to soften up. So is Witherspoon gonna tank? I don't know if it's gonna tank, who knows? But I do know that it is softening up and that 600 a foot, which by the way, $600 a foot, that is not cheap. $4 million, $3 million, $2.5 million, $4.1 million. 
It's pricey. Let's look at the lease. Let's see if there's been any uh, rentals. Okay, so only one rental. This is probably why uh, $2.12 per foot. $13,500 a month to rent in this neighborhood. That's wild. Um, you can also see the annualized. Let's look at the close volume. It's dropped a lot annualized, and now it's picking back up a little bit. So who knows? 2024, if, if the close volume continues to pick up, maybe it's normalized. I don't know. Now, there's a lot of new builds in this neighborhood. I don't know how many lots they have. Of course, you can see the new builds right here. Pretty much all that are bought, all that are being sold are new builds. So those are all the new builds. Here's the existing. So you can see existing homes are going for 500 and below. New builds are going for 570-ish. If you look at new build prices, new build prices have been dropping. That is an interesting sign. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please click like, and I will see you next week. Have a great weekend.